one thing that this ministry has purposed is that we will find people to find the purpose that is in God. इस कलिसिया का ये मकसद है कि हर एक भाई और बहन अपना मकसद प्रभु में ढूंढेंगे अपना मित्र प्रभु में ढूंढेंगे
because the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. Okay. I'm, I'm accustomed to give you scriptures because I, I want you to connect that I don't speak anything except the word of God. <coughs> so I will not uh, give you more, but you can if you want to write it down, you write it down. If you don't want to write it down, it's fine. John 16, 13. Okay, we will guide you into all truth. 1624. Whatever you shall ask. After that, you will receive it. There's nothing. Because I, until now, he says, you have received, I like that verse, receive nothing. You have asked nothing. That means you have, you have not received to the level that he wants to give you. So if you are a container here that is empty, God wants to not only fill you, he wants to make it to overflow. Okay, so that's that's his agenda. And I'm not giving you an emotional talk because I'll give you backup scriptures. Deuteronomy 11, 21. I met today someone who is an unbeliever, a multi billion man. <coughs> everything looked good and always they show as though everything is good and I, I have no issues with that. But the moment you just touch the area that what's happening in the families, you understand there are so much. The son had to go to England for one year, come back, go to US for the one year, and come back and blamed his parents that you wasted my life. So both the father and the mother sat with the child and said, now we want you to make a decision. And that's the last place that a parent has to be. Because if you are putting decision making into the hands of your kids, then you are really more of a kid yourself. You are kidding me. So, he is now studying some different field for the past three years in heaven. Now, I don't want to say the name because I don't want you to identify a person in America. But the very sad part is that being unbeliever and being a believer, you have the privilege of exactly knowing the beauty of exactly knowing where to be, when to be, or what to be. So, Deuteronomy 11, this is what God is speaking to you, and this is Old Testament. The new covenant is a better covenant. How many of you know the blood speaks better than the old covenant? So, 11 22, 21, Deuteronomy 11 21, that your days. <coughs> that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them. I like the last part. As the days of heaven upon the earth. What is God saying? If you have not tasted heaven, I want heaven to be in your life. What is he expecting you to see in 2016? <clears throat> Heaven is going to be yours. Amen. Okay. So, well, I'll share my <coughs> When I first became a believer, <coughs> 1983, after seven years, 1990, I happened to go to, and if I'm sharing this, I'm sharing this just for you to understand how the Lord leads us. 1990, I was in two services on the New Year's Day. I was in CWS morning service, and I was in, there was a service that used to happen in Antara, somebody must be knowing, you know? Yes. Yes, yes. So, morning, I was in CWS, evening, I was in Yes. And that's one key that I want you always to do, is because if you are focused, God can speak. Matthew 6, 22, if you have a single eye, your life will be full of light. What is the problem? That a lot of people don't see what others see. is because they have so many multitask, so many things that they... And you sang the last song, let my eyes be only for you. So I'm not speaking, if you are single eye, if you're focused, God will speak to you and you will be at 
the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, and that's no problem. Okay, it's 1990, I was in two places where God spoke to me from the book of Joshua. Same perfect scripture, Joshua chapter 1, 5 to 9. Okay? No man will be able to stand before you. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with him. Okay? You need to meditate on my word day and night. And the one thing that I could understand how the Holy Spirit speaks is that He will not only speak once, He will speak <coughs> twice. The word that Bishop was using, the word Kairos moment. This afternoon, somebody who happened to be with me <coughs> spoke to me that you are in the Kairos moment. So, how do I know the Holy Spirit speaks? Because He will speak. And if you have ears, you will hear. Blessed are these ears because they hear. Okay, so you keep your perspective, your perspective because your, holy, your, your ears are the key to your tomorrow. If you are able to hear, that's why be, being quiet, being still, if you want to, Isaiah 30 verse 15, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength, in returning and rest shall you be saved, but you would not. <clears throat> That's why verse 18 says, the Lord will have to wait to be gracious to you. Why does He have to wait? Because He can't bless you in the place that you have all these activities happening. So until and unless you be single life. So 1990, I was, and one thing that I'm not here to boast, I'm here to share my heart out, is that coming from a Hindu background where I used to worship idols, <coughs> I was in debt at that time for, uh, at the age of 18, we had a debt of, uh, I think, Sashi Juta, 1970s, 1918 it was. <coughs> no income. We had a shop that had whatever was we were making throughout the month. Okay, to a Juta we were making at that time. Not the profit. I'm talking of the sales was sufficient to pay the interest that we had for the Sarasuma Purujuta that we had owed, which we lost because my dad borrowed uh, money to So I was at a fix. I didn't know what to do. But there was one thing I did. I said, God, I only make one request. I don't know who you are. I want you to take me out of this because I don't want any, we are a small Sindhi society, I don't want anyone to point that you have taken money. I just want you to give me enough to survive. I'm asking for a zero so that at least I will come out of the 10th standard not owing anybody any money. And I will be most grateful for what you do for me. I never expected that God would take me to a different level. Now, the, the, over a short period of time, He brought me to Christ supernaturally. There was Indians that came, made suits. I came to know the Lord, and that's why I was I was fascinated because from that moment, just supernaturally, when the, you have the good news, what is the good news? The good news is that it brings transformation. It's supposed to wherever the seed of the gospel is given. <clears throat> if it changes your mindset, it will change everything in your life. So in the space of from 1983 to 1988, we were able to pay to the penny the money that we borrowed. The person who gave us the money from Bandung, my father's friend, did not even know we lost the money. And that was the good news. Because had he known, he would have asked for the money back. And we would not have the space of time. So we paid the money, we paid the interest, and in 1988, we were completely, we balanced ourselves that we were already out of debt. But in 1990, we were able to make sufficient that my dad had dreams to start making some property in India. Now that was a coincidence because he never thought, he said he was going to India after 14 years. 
His mother had just passed away. One of his greatest tragedy was uh, his, his sadness was that he felt that he should have gone earlier, but his, he couldn't meet his mother. And that's why timing is everything. If you know timing, relationships are precious. So he, he happened to land in Bombay uh, for the uh, funeral of my grandmother. And in that, in that uh, place, there was a place in Bandra. He visited with my cousin who happened to be there. My cousin wanted to go to that place and visit somebody who, and told my dad, and I'm giving you details for only one reason, that the leading of the Holy Spirit is something that you need to follow. Okay? Now, if you're not following, you're missing out on everything. Now, I'm here taking care of a shop. My dad is there and my cousin goes inside and my dad says, don't you think it's time for me also to, you know, can I just come in? You know, just, is there any harm for me to come in? To, keep, to uh, cut the whole thing short, that became my house in Bangla. He bought that house in 1990. And I was the only one in 1983, I think 84, we, we got, our whole family got uh, and I was sorry because I was the only one that had missed I was already 18. I was the only one that had missed the vote. I felt. So I was the only one that had Indian citizenship. But if God's ways are higher than your ways, and God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts, then you need to understand that if God is doing something, you have to just follow the purposes of God. So anyway, that house was bought in 1994, 1990. We bought a house. In 1994, he bought another one in June. in June. By the time we were supposed to get married in 1994, uh, he had already bought uh, three properties there. And when we were getting married, I brought them to the very house, thinking that we were going to settle in Jakarta till one fine day, which was God's plan. My dad said, it's about time for you to decide if you want to be here or you want to go to India. But I would suggest that you go to India because you already have a setup. So I think you need to take care of that. You got the whole thing? Sure. 1994, we got married. In three days' time, we were made sure that we were out of this place. Because I think you know, he was thinking that you know, he's already the coordinator of the church before uh, of the Theophilus. If he stays longer, you know, he might become the pastor of Now God's plans cannot be denied. So anyway, 1994, packed us, sent us to uh, India. We were in one room. We have uh, three rooms, but then if, you, if you know India somewhat, in 1994, it is something like, you know, you wouldn't want to be there. And me and Danu were in one room in that house, looking to one another. We had nobody that we knew in the city. We had no business. I had business. I had no ministry. I don't know a single soul. Okay? And we both were singing. Not singing, we both were seeing one another. And there was that song playing just of God Moon saying, God will make a way where there seems to be a way. And I, tears were rolling. I think both of our eyes were just, to be honest, and we were looking. I, I just never knew that this was going to happen. It took up 1994, we got married. 1995, we got Joshua. <clears throat> and now my story begins. Okay, you thought you've heard enough? You haven't heard anything. 1995, Joshua came. Just, when you are in love with the Lord, okay, in every, you read Psalm 66, verse 12, even if you go through it, God brings you to your wedding place. There was a prophet. We were just, we met a pastor who brought us to a crusade on the outskirts of Bombay. And we were just walking, and that lady just comes from far and sees them and says, God has blessed your womb and uh, you're going to get a son. That was, a, that was, we got married in May. Three months later, 
exactly this uh, this happened. Now she was not ready, but God was ready. <clears throat> what am I saying to you? You don't need to be ready because when God is ready, you become ready. Okay. Joshua came. Okay, first ninety five. Josh, now, Tanu had a dream. That's why I pay attention to your dreams. What was the dream she had? She had a lion. Is that right? Okay. She had a dog. And she had a rabbit. Okay. So, now, obviously we didn't, we didn't decode. But when you understand when God speaks, He speaks not only circumstances, he speaks in the spirit as you know from the word. Because if you are tuned to the word, you will be tuned to the spirit of God. Joshua came after four years, 1999, we got Caleb. And that was already my dream was that if I got Joshua, then I got scriptures that say Joshua and Caleb will take me to the promised land. So Joshua means the line of Judah. It's it's another name of Jesus. Caleb had a different spirit, he followed the Lord wholeheartedly and that was one of the things but that symbolizes that all, faithfulness. And we were, we were, I mean I was lost in ministry. Okay, in 1999 there was a ministry from US, uh, Morningstar, uh, Ernest Mall, if you have ever heard, this man is no more but he is the pastor, he was the pastor of uh, Morningstar, he especially was invited to Mumbai because they wanted to inaugurate a place. So God will use different means just to promote you. So in the very place where we were not seen suddenly overnight, they had a, they had uh, this ministry that came from Canada that decided that I was going to be the pastor there. In 99 they ordered me and Pastor Ernest Moore came all the way from US and the thing that became a, hit, a big thing was at that time the Mindra, the actor, happened to be connected to this family of prayer and care center that I was becoming a pastor. So he came on the, on the podium and just as actors always do, they are good at acting. Okay, So he was very gracious with his words, he spoke on love, he spoke on Christ. And when he spoke on Christ, everyone in the whole thing, it became <clears throat> the talk of the town that the Mindra has become a believer. So, I, my thing was enveloped in that, in that uh, whatever was happening. Things didn't change, I was still in that. But then got a word in 1999, which she marked in her Bible. That's why India won. Because when God speaks to you, He will speak to you first from the Word. She had marked in the Bible, in Joshua, when the walls, Joshua chapter 6, when the walls were coming down, she made a mark uh, and she underlined specifically uh, that the walls are coming down. And she heard it, the walls are coming down. This is 1999, she wrote the date, I think it's May something. And, uh, 2004, actually 2003, I got uh, a word, that's why I pay attention to the word, I got a word that Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, forget the form of things, don't even consider it, behold, I am doing a new thing, that was the year in 2003 and 28th of December, Daniel was born. <clears throat> Within uh, six months, the walls where I, we, were, we had a place in Juhu, the walls came down and we got two flats, double flat. So that became a spacious place, which today is there. So that's when we started our El Shura Ministries three years back and uh, things have prospered from there. But simply now, my message is this, and I think I'll, I always love illustrating messages, number one. I've already
already told you, make it very simple. Last time somebody told me, make it simple, as simple as possible. Okay, what is the simplicity? God wants you to have heaven on earth. Okay, all that you go through, if you still keep your focus to be single minded He will turn that very places to be your wealthy place. <coughs> If you got ears, you will, you will see this happening because there was no focus on making money because there was no question of that. It was, but there was one focus that if God has taken me so far, He will take me all the way. If eternity is His agenda, then He will take care of the present, He will take care of your tomorrow. But all that I need to do is to follow Him. Okay, so maybe I, you, you know, you make, you make sometimes, how much? Okay, I would like to make an illustration. This wall, this wall. Okay, now the Holy Spirit, I need to walk. Okay, and the Word is the one walk for which I will be able to know where He's going. So where He takes a turn, now you sit down. If He stops, I got to stop. Now, if I'm distracted, if I'm not focused, what will I be doing? <coughs> 40 years of wilderness. I'm just moving in circles. Who is responsible? God already gave you the spirit. You have the excess. Okay? So when you receive Christ, Joshua, okay, the first example, when you have your Joshua, when you have your Joshua means Jesus, that's another name. Okay, we got Joshua in 95. Okay, and one of the reasons maybe you think, but I'm also focused that they get the message of what I'm sharing today. Because they do not know exactly what happened. So if they know exactly, they can, they can follow the footsteps, that they don't make mistakes tomorrow. Or if they understand, you don't invent anything. Do you hear me, Joshua? You don't have to invent. Your career is not an invention. Your life partner is never an invention. If you make an invention like that, you have just walked into a life. Until and unless you don't hear the Holy Spirit and you get the peace, that's Colossians 3.15. The peace is the empire. If you have the peace, but when you go to daughters, you just need to make sure that, alright, if you know it's the Holy Spirit and the best example is yourself. So I can, I can tell Joshua to be what I am, okay, because I am an example to him. Okay, if I am doing what, it's not what I'm saying, it's what I'm doing. So everything that I'm doing. So the first thing when you have it, right, receive Christ, your Joshua, okay, Caleb, okay, come. You need to have a different spirit. What is the spirit? If you have the spirit of the world, then you have missed your next season. What is the next season? Okay. Caleb speaks of faithfulness. If you have Jesus, the most priceless treasure, pearl of great of the priceless pearl. You know what, what, what is my saddest thing? <clears throat> when I see, you understand that. You know, if you, if you are a jeweler, you should never go to a fish market. Because you can't sell jeweler, jewelry to the fish. They will never understand the value. What do you have to, have to remember? The jeweler understands only the value. If you have got eyes for what you have, you will never sell it short. So having Christ is having more bigger than all the wealth. Because Jesus says, what does it profit? A man who gains the whole world but loses his own soul. What is it right? What is he actually saying? Hey, see this get up, pick up. Okay. You may you may be the top businessman of I'm not against you may be the top businessman of any country, city, or even a continent of the world, or even the whole world. 
But if you, you lose what you have, you are not only poor, you are pitiful. Because what you had, you had no value of it and you went for something that had no value. If you were to lose your breath, which you definitely will. Because death is, what is the statistics? One out of one. Death is sure. There's no question about that. So what, are you, what, are you, what am I saying to you? If you have your treasure, then you need to, to have Caleb follow because the moment you understand the faithfulness of your God, you need to keep a different spirit. If you have a different spirit, you will only and only focus. Nobody will cheat you out of this. I, I've got so many people sometimes that tell me, you know, somebody made me do it. The devil made me do it. You got the devil made me do it. Jesus has already dealt with the devil at the cross. You don't either you don't understand the scriptures, but you you got no no this. You have missed it. Now, if you acknowledge that, you missed it because you were focused on something else. What you had, you know how, how big pockets they, they take you. They'll, they'll make you focus on something so that they, you are so focused that you will not know what you are losing. That is what the devil is. He will distract you to a such an extent that he, if he knows that, you can be distracted. So what am I saying to you? If there's one thing that I want you to keep this as your memory, never get distracted to keep not only what you sang, because some of you sing a lot of worship songs without understanding. If you sing, you have to keep yourself that if you seek the face of the Lord, okay, and keep your eyes focused, okay, your next season is just the next thing. And when God does it, the door that God opens, no man can shut. Just you don't have to, you understand, in India, I didn't have to focus on anything. Things happened. Okay. How did it happen? I have no clue. Okay. So, once you get Joshua, you need to have the spirit of Caleb. You need to be faithful. What is the sense? Proverbs 28, 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Who? A faithful man. The, this that is written, heaven and earth may pass away. Matthew 24, 35. May pass away, but his words will not pass away. So if you're looking for blessings in the places, you're missing the mark. Because all that you need to do is to make a change in yourself. Be faithful. One thing good God has placed me is that if, if you leave me in a particular place, I will, I will be committed to that for life. Remember that. This relationship is the most precious relationship that will keep every other relationship in place. So if this comes in alignment, okay, your focus, everything else, this is, this, you are faithful to this. The ones that are not faithful to you will have to bow down to be faithful. So don't worry about what others are not faithful about to you. Just remember, you need to be faithful to the one who has called you because everything is sowing and reaping. Genesis 8, 20, whatever you sow, that shall be reaped. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will be there. So you don't worry about what's not happening in your life. You prioritize on what needs to happen when you are concerned with the one that you are faithful to and the Holy Spirit is the one that completes it. Now this, once you are faithful to the Lord, your next season of Daniel, okay, that is really common. Yeah, good. The rabbit comes. Okay. Rabbit speaks of multiplication. I later found out Rabbit means you never have a rabbit once. It, it, when it this it multiplies. Okay. This is the equation. When you have a faithful spirit, everything will start multiplying. It's a matter of time. Okay. It's only a matter of time. So prophetically, you need to remember this. 
Uh, you need to always remember that. Okay, the one that you have found is priceless. And if you understand how priceless he is, okay, it's not words. Your belief has to transform your behavior. I've got many people today who speak about it. But your beliefs, your behavior speaks about your beliefs. I'll put it simply. If you really believe, your, your behavior will be seen. So, what am I saying to you? If you truly say, I love you, Lord, what are you saying? I've got only eyes for you. I'm only seeking your face. Okay, so, all that you have, I believe that you will, now Deuteronomy, what is the word that the Lord gave for this place? And I'm saying not only for this place, for each one of you. You have heard the word. To whom much is given, much is required. Okay. Some of you did not know what you had to do. But till you didn't know what you had to do, you were not accountable. But from today, because, not because I landed here, because I wanted to land here, because the Holy Spirit brought me here. And you today have heard, not the voice of me, but I believe the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. Now, if you understand, in the Old Testament, it was an evidence that the moment you obey every blessing of Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14, was going to be used. I like that word there in verse 1. If, if you obey, all these blessings shall, I like that word, overtake. You understand overtake? That means you don't have to take it. It has to overtake you. That means you are not following it. Whom are you following? You are following your Joshua. You are following with the spirit of Caleb. You are carrying the overflow of Daniel. So that's going to happen because God's word cannot fail. So what is the word saying? You told me 28, 1 to 14. If you obey my voice, all these blessings will overtake you. Now of course it may not be the present, but it's going to come in its season. Because of your faithfulness. Because of your focused. Matthew 6, 22. If you are focused, if your eye be single, you will be, your body will be full of light. Okay, so you, you, you have to keep your, now what is the word that specifically is going to come in your life? Now this, this is not only a word that I'm speaking to you, this is a prophetic word. Stano is a witness of, sometimes there are seasons where God will use a specific time to bring a prophetic word for a purpose that is going to launch you to your destiny. What happened in which year was it? Your son's name? Okay, I think it was eight thousand. Okay, um, again I'm sharing this. Okay, there was a lady. Now I was taking care of a small church, a Chambur church in Chambur. That was before I had my own ministry. As I told you, faithfulness is the evidence of your enlargement. It's going to enlarge. It's a matter of time. So I was taking care of this church and I came to know. This church came into my lap because the earlier pastor had an issue of some finances and there were a lot of issues on different levels. So I actually didn't get to meet the pastor. From the head, it was decided to just put it in the lap of my senior pastor. That senior pastor decided to put it in the lap of another person. But what God has for you, it will always fall on your, on your lap. So you don't have to worry about that. You get what I'm saying? Your faithfulness is going to bring things just, okay? If you're looking for position, you're looking for promotion, you're looking for the wrong thing. You have to look for the person of the Holy Spirit. When you're following the Holy Spirit, waiting on him, if he's waiting, he's doing something. He's quiet for a particular reason. Okay, if he's just quiet, you be quiet. Because if you are restless, who is going to do something? Your flesh is going to be activated by the enemy. 
do something. Look, rent has gone so far. That fellow has opened three shops. You are just sitting in one shop. I, I'm just giving an example. I'm not speaking of any person. I'm just giving an example. I don't know if it's property but for someone. But I'm just giving you an example. That if it's not from the Holy Spirit, you're just wasting your time. So you just wait and just do what you have to do. Keep your faithfulness. And when you keep doing that, you will see a transformation. Now, in 2000, and okay, so this church, I came to know that there was a lady who was a doctor, okay, that used to be a part of the earlier church, that used to come and bring, she was more like an evangelist. So she used to always send people, because most of her patients were always there with her in the church. But because of the earlier pastor, there was something that happened, she stopped coming. So, because we wanted our church to grow, so we were thinking, and somebody said, why don't you go to Dr. Yosna? Okay, because she is under persecution. Her husband is the police officer who caught Pharaoh's Khan's uh, son in, in, in some narcotic case. So he is, he is a big narcotic officer, and he moves around with guns. So nobody messes around with it. So his wife is also under that kind of a house arrest, like, you know, you can't, you can't go to church. So if you want to meet her, she's depressed. If you want to meet her, you've got to meet her in a clinic. Now, it's a 45 minutes drive from our place to that place, and me and Anu went to meet her. And specifically, it was an impression. As much as I'm saying to you, it's an impression now. I will never say the sister. I will always say it's an impression. Okay. So it was an impression given to me of Exodus chapter 3, 7 to 10, that the Moses has been sent, your deliverer has been sent. Okay, in a matter of time. All that you have to do, there were three scriptures given to me. Isaiah 54, go and just sing. So I just told her, this lady is crying. Tanu was there with me. This lady is crying. I said, see, your deliverer has come, Exodus 3, 7 to 10. Okay. Now I have no clue what it is. I have just a simple thing that this is what, okay. She said that my husband has even tried shooting me. She is saying this is like this. Now obviously we can't do anything. We are just ordinary people. We are pastors of a church. We can't do, we can't take, take that responsibility of, of. So I said, go and Isaiah 54 says, sing. If you're barren, sing. He said, you just go back home and just sing. That's what the Lord says. Within 24 hours, the next day, and Tano is there as a witness. Okay, and here is not, I'm not speaking of anything. If you hear the leading of the Holy Spirit, it speaks through the word. That's why you need to value the word. Okay. Within 24 hours, that lady calls Tano and says, my husband has been caught in a raid. He was in a narcotic raid. A narcotic officer is caught in a narcotic raid. With civil goods. Okay. And he is inside the bar, inside jail. Okay. And now, what do I do? Everything was suspended. He was suspended. His uniform was taken off. Okay. That happened within 24 hours. Okay, and just, uh, so I just, we decided, the one we decided, she, now that she's got no house arrest, she's got the man behind bars, she can come to church. So she started coming to our, our chamber church, okay. We had an English service, small, around 50 people, okay. Uh, it was uh, simply, I, I, oh, that was 2008, in 2010, I was led that we need to start another English service. So we had the service, English service from 6.30 to 8. So we started a Hindi service from 4.30 to 6. And the beauty of that thing was that I was led to Dr. Josna, the same doctor, would be the pastor of the Hindi church. So she became the pastor of the Hindi church. And that church grew to become, our English congregation was only 50. And it remained 50. 
but the Hindi chairs started to become 250. Okay, so in a matter of time, it, it was just growing. Mm -hmm. In 2012, when my father passed away, the Lord led me to uh, start El Shaddai. In two weeks' time, I told them that we wanted to start. In 2013, there was a prophetess from Jakarta. Okay. I am not here to tell anybody's name, but there was a prophetess who called me and said, you are saying, there is an exodus coming in your church. Now, just, you understand, prophet speaks a lot of things. Okay, exodus can mean exodus anything. So, you have two people ended up in your church, that's an exodus, it can mean you. So, okay, fine, okay. I, I, and one thing, always remember, okay, what you don't like, put it in the shell. Don't receive everything from everyone. You need to be accountable to the leadership. But make sure, okay, that you don't reject anything without, because if the Holy Spirit has something, He will work on it. You don't work on it, you just keep it. So, I got that word. This lady calls me. She belongs to a different church altogether. She calls me and says, God is a pastor, something is wrong. Ever since you left, things are not the same. I said, I've not. I'm not able to do anything now because I'm not a pastor of that church. Okay, so you have to simply, I said, I don't know what to do. Go and meet. There's a, there is a senior pastor of the whole Mumbai churches who is coming to preach at our place on a, on a Sunday. So just meet him half an hour earlier. She came and met him. She related what was the problem. Okay, because there was there was a church that was not even it was uh, the term used was it's a, it was an orphan church. Okay, it's an orphan church. I said I never knew there was an orphan church. Orphan church. Okay, we are orphan. So that same pastor is is today now pastoring our Hindi congregation, which is in Kurla. So we have two places where we have churches. One is Juhu. And one is in Kurla, where she is the pastor. Simply said, when the Lord leads you to a word, He establishes it. If you obey and be faithful. I'm concluding it. This is the word for every one of you. Leviticus 26 verse 9. Leviticus 26 verse 9. Now, this is conditional to your taking care of your Joshua, staying with the Caleb, to be faithful, with a whole hearted, you will, you will see the increase. But Daniel should never stop you because prosperity sometimes can hinder you to do things for what God wants you to do. So Leviticus 26 verse 9. If you understand, Leviticus was a book given to the priests. Each one of you, as a priest, you need to, from verse 1, it says that you need to obey what the word says. But the, the blessing of obedience is recorded in verse 9. Some translation it says, I will have favor upon you. I will return to you. Okay. Okay, but it's some translation. James, 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 it says, I will have respect unto you. I will have respect unto you. I will respect you. The owner of heaven and earth respects you. Okay, in some translation, I will have favor upon you. Okay, in the book of Exodus, when the children of Israel cried, okay, the Lord remembered them and had respect. That word is the favor. I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. What is the covenant? It's a blood covenant. The blood that was shed still speaks of this promise. Heaven on earth. 
Okay? And you shall eat. This is what is happening to me now. I'm coming here exactly after 22 years. Because after marriage, we have actually not come here for more than a week. So, what you are reading is what is happening to me now. Okay? He made me things that are opened up, whatever, I believe that God is bringing back the old into the new. <laughs> Nothing that you sow will go in vain. And you shall eat all store and bring forth the old because of the new. What's the new wine that you carry? What's the new wine that you carry? Faithfulness. 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 The anointing that you carry will be faithfulness. You are focused to be single eyed. It's the new wine. What did Jesus say? Do not put new wine in old wine skins. So you have to keep in mind, if your mindset after hearing this word is of yesterday, nothing will change. What is required of you? I need to be focused. I need to be faithful. I need to be fruitful. I need to be focused. That will keep me faithful. That will make me fruitful. Okay. And the byproduct is, you will see the favor of God. And I will set my tabernacle among you. I don't know how that means to you, but it means a lot to me. The tabernacle was the presence of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you go, the presence of God will go with you. I don't know how... If God walks with you, I don't know how better things can be. What you touch, He touches. The lives that you meet obviously will change. Verse 12 And I will walk among you, among you, and will be your God, and you shall. Only remember this verse 13. The first I am that you read in Exodus 3.14, you will read it here again. There are seven I am's and you understand the resurrection and the life that we come Here is the one I am. Okay? I am the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. When you were not saved, you were in the world. You didn't make me make a choice. I made a choice. John 15, 16. You did not choose me. I chose you. And I have chosen you because I have set you apart. I have ordained you that you may be different. Good. All in different deeds. There is no comparison. Okay. Which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt that you should not be their one man. You should not be subjected to what the world is. What the world is doing is not your standard. 22 years later, I visited my shop. It was in that very shop that I cried one day and I said, God, I don't want to die like this. What was my cry? But I don't want to open the shop in the morning, wait for customers to come, take measurements, go to the tailor, get it stitched, and wait for the next one. And on two days back, My brother is the one who takes care of that. And it's wonderful. If, if there's a season for everything. But believe me, you are called for greater things. What are you called for? You are called for not to be a born servant of the systems of the world. Because there are only two kingdoms. 
What kingdom? The kingdom of God and the Babylon system. What is the system of the world? It's a Babylon system. A day will come when everything will come crumbling down. Of course, you are not going to be here. You are already ahead. But if you are so much caught up into death, you are going to miss out because you have a king who has bought you with his own blood. That you should no longer be the world that is slaves. What are you? You are now a servant of righteousness. You serve for the purpose to bring people to be set free. So, you, I am the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, then you should not be their bond. And, I'm speaking this over this house. You got something broken? It's a symbolic thing. I have broken. You saw that word? I have broken. Don't put what God has broken back in its place. I've taken you out to be my own. I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you, what is the last word? Upright. Not broken. You are upright. You are straight. You are light. You are soft. You are different. Okay. You are something. First Peter 2 9 he said, You are a chosen generation. You are killing people. But the only thing is sometimes the familiar words have become so familiar that it's lost its significance. What is the significance? You are a different breed. Why is the problem? The problem is if you can't see it, you don't know it. You can't hear it. I am not promoting that you walk with a pride. But Psalm 3 3 says, He is the glory and the lifter up of your head. If you've been taken out, then you got the Holy Spirit. The owner of heaven and earth abides in you and everything that he carries you will be in charge of. Because what Adam lost is restored back in in Christ. So if you are in Christ, what are you in? Everything that is in Christ is yours. So the effort that the enemy is trying to make you to be owners is actually slaves. When you stop being slave to the world system, you actually become owners. You getting what I'm saying? It's if it's not too difficult. In the kingdom of God, how do you become rich? When you give, you become rich. Do you know that if you talk to a person of the world, give and you become rich, they'll tell you something is wrong. What is it saying? Because in the world, what you say is what is yours. The kingdom of God is exactly opposite to the system of the world. Here you want to become owners. The day you become, you take ownership of the Lord that is in you. You become owner of everything that He has for you. And what God gives, nobody can take. The day you start going for things, you think you are the owner and the devil is actually your owner. 
So Leviticus 26, 9. Today I have seen you with respect. What is it? You have received the law. You know the Lord. And because you have the Lord, you have everything that comes into your life. Last time you heard the word. Today you heard the word. Next week, Kadu and myself will be laying hands on individuals. We will be laying hands on families. Now all that I'm saying to you is simple. If you believe on something called impartation, what is impartation? Impartation is that whatever we release into your life, what has happened in us, you are a partaker of it because you are going to see the focus that has come in your life to be faithful, to bring the favor of God. So, I'm asking you, if you are ready for this, what is what I'm asking you? You're not coming here. Anointing is costly. You know what people do? When I'm speaking costly, I'm not speaking of. You need to give double money for the anointing. Anoint people who sell such anointing are not anointing. I don't know how many of you got that. If you can buy anointing on it or anointing from someone, then Christ is for sale and I don't need that Christ. Okay, because the day I understand that simple truth, that you will have a life that is consecrated. What is consecration? Set apart. You are set apart for great things. <coughs> Jakarta has yet to see someone who will bring what God has heaven to come on earth. Is there any city better than heaven? No, I would like to go to America. I would like to go to this. You don't have to go to America. You just have to be consecrated. The day you are consecrated, heaven comes in your life. And I will be there with them. Okay? If you are ready, and I'm not opening this door to everybody, I'm opening this door to selected people, that you are going to say, yes, I'm going to be focused, my eye is going to be single, I'm going to be faithful, I'm going to be staying faithful, because Leviticus 26, 9, the old, he is going to bring into the new. And if I can't handle the new, what will I take care of the old? Are you getting what I'm saying? If the foundation today is not placed, First Corinthians 3 11, there is no other foundation that any man can lay but the Lord Jesus Christ. What is your foundation? If it's in Christ, you are a you are. Otherwise, all is sinking sand. Okay? Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. I receive this word. And I receive it on the ground. Through the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. That today, I'm not only a hearer of your word, I will be a doer of it. Today onwards, you will prepare me that I will be separated from people, from the things of the world, for only the purpose that your spirit has for me. I believe today, through the blood of Jesus, that you have bought me with a price that cannot be paid by any man. I receive today that the price that you have paid for me, I will dedicate it. Not only my life, everything that is in my, in my life, I will be there to serve you wholeheartedly. Whatever you put in my hands, However much it multiplies, it's going to be multiplied back in your life. It's going to be multiplied back to serve you. And I not only say this, Holy Spirit, I desire it, you will do it. I thank you all in Jesus' name.